Hi, this is Paul Knopfler at UC Davis School of Medicine. I'm a professor here in the Department of Cell Biology and Human Anatomy. I do stem cell and cancer research, but I also spend a little bit of my time doing educational outreach. And part of that outreach effort is running a blog called The Niche. And I've been doing that for about 11 and a half years almost. And it's been a really interesting experience. And, and that's also kind of in part inspired me to do these videos uh, I'm now putting together here on YouTube. And over the years of doing this blog, going to conferences, um, I've gotten asked a lot of really unusual questions. Uh, people want to know, for instance, uh, if they got a blood transfusion from a much younger person uh, on a regular basis, would that make them younger? Um, if they got, you know, could you get your uh, faulty kidney, you know, kidney that's failing replaced with a new one that's grown in the lab? You know, that those there's some things there that, you know, there might be some possibilities uh, in terms of stem cell based organ transplants. But I think one of the more unusual questions uh, also relating to transplants is this idea of doing head transplants. So uh, the point of today's video is really to kind of fact check where we're at with the idea of head transplants and kind of go through some of the key issues there. The take home is I don't think this is really ready uh, for use anytime soon. We're not really gonna see this happening, but it's kind of a funny, interesting area and there's some uh, interesting science behind that as well. So what I wanna do is go ahead and share my screen of a recent post I did kind of uh, fact checking this idea of head transplants, and we can kind of go through that together in this video. So here's my site, The Niche. Um, it used to mainly just be a blog, and you can see that's still here, but now there's a lot of other resources here for other scientists, also for patients. So I encourage you to check it out at ipsl.com. And one of the posts I did earlier this year was looking at head transplants. So again, part of the reason I'm even talking about this is that there actually are a lot of people interested in this. Um, and despite the sort of vast array of um, people interested in head transplants in the scientific field, there aren't that many people interested in this or actually doing research on this, I should say. And here we're just scrolling down. We can see one of the main proponents or perhaps the propo main proponent is this guy, Sergio uh, Canavero. And he's done a TED talk on head transplants and he's done, I think, some different research in animals. And it seems Sergio really believes this is doable, I don't know when, in the next few years, the next 10 years. And a lot of people who have asked me about head transplants cite him, Sergio, and, and how enthusiastic he is about this and um, you know, really wonder if this is possible. So, let's kind of start with what would be the point of doing a head transplant, right? I mean, we have our heads, we have our bodies, you know, we have one body with the head attached. And, you know, you can imagine if you do have a diseased kidney and you get a kidney transplant, um, you're still really the same person, right? And you, maybe you get that kidney from someone who was in an accident who uh, has died, but their kidney is still in good shape. But when it comes to a head transplant, what we're talking about, it's sort of funny because you're, I guess you're imagining taking a head and putting it on a new body, but that's an entire body. So you're sort of transplanting the head, but in a way you're also, you could say you're transplanting a body. And so this is obviously much more extreme than just getting like a blood transfusion or a liver transplant or a kidney transplant. So what's the point? And as I wrote here, I can, I can imagine two main uh, possible uses here if this was actually technically doable. So in one case, we have a hypothetical patient who has a healthy brain, uh, their mind's in good shape, but their body's profoundly ill. Maybe their body's going to die in a sense uh, because of um, kidney failure, liver failure, cancer that hasn't gotten into the brain. Um, so the idea here would be the head itself seems okay, right? And so you're just trying to get a new body that doesn't have this serious or fatal illness and put the head and the body together and this person in a sense could still go on living. So that's one scenario. And again, I have to kind of think about this, you know, if you're taking someone's head, I, I guess sort of the essence of who we are in part is our head and our brain. But if you're giving them an entirely new body besides their head, you have to wonder, is that really even the same person? Maybe it is. I mean, you know, people often imagine um, putting someone's consciousness or their brain into like a, 
a robot, some kind of cyborg situation. And they still kind of think of that as the same person, but if your brain's you know, in a different context, whether that's a different biological body or a mechanical body, you, know, you have to wonder if that's still you. I guess maybe it's some version of you. In any case, now we can kind of get on to the second possible use, which I think has directed or um, gotten a lot of tension from uh, maybe these aging billionaires and stuff. And, and so the second idea is that you want to live a much longer life or even, you know, approach immortality. So the idea here is that, you know, and this is probably pretty naive is that, oh, okay, our head, our brain, you know, maybe that's, that's still pretty healthy again. And we don't have some kind of fatal disease in our body, but our body's just getting older. So we're going to put our head on a new body, you know, and we're going to be youthified, you know, our aging is going to go uh, kind of back in time. There is some evidence, I, I think, in mice that, you know, young tissues, young blood, there's this sort of term young blood, again, sort of associated with the idea of these young blood transplants that could help someone stay younger, which is not really proven. Um, so I, I guess the idea here is that if the entire rest of your body now after this transplant is younger, maybe your, bre your brain would sort of start behaving in a younger way or sort of maintain at least its status quo and not get older. So these seem to be the two main scenarios I can see. Maybe there are other ones as well where someone might think about, uh, you know, or want a head transplant. So where does the technology currently stand? I think there, there have been some studies in rodents and in even some um, other kinds of animals, like not, not necessarily mammals, where you actually can at least create a living organism that has the head of one animal and the body of another one. You know, this is a really tough thing to achieve because you have coming out of your brain, obviously there's the spinal cord and all these nerve fibers and to do a head or even just a brain transplant, if you're just gonna take the brain itself, which people also sometimes sort of lump into the category of head transplants, one way or another, you have to kind of cut all of those nerve fibers coming out of the brain that are supposed to be connected uh, to the rest of your body. And then if you put the head or brain into another body, uh, you know, there's really no current technology that allows you to successfully reattach all those nerve fibers to the right nerve fibers uh, in the donor body and, and just have you go along and, and do okay. In the animal experiments, I don't quite know how those worked out, at least temporarily, to create a somewhat living or organism for a while. Uh, you know, perhaps in some animals, there's a little bit more capacity for uh, nerve fiber healing or regrowth, something like that. So this is really a huge, you know, it's really a daunting technological challenge that I just can't imagine how that's going to be overcome. Uh, I suppose it's possible that you could transplant a brain or head onto some kind of machinery, you know, that um, somehow the nerve fibers don't need to move arms and legs and things like that the way they used to, but then you're kind of moving away, I would say, from what it really means to be human. Um, so here's just uh, a little bit in this post about the head transplant surgery that's, that has been done in animals. And uh, one of my favorite science writers, Antonio Regalado, kind of speculated, you know, is this work in mice that was done in China, is this kind of pointing to the idea that, um, you know, you could have a source of donor bodies, you wouldn't have to necessarily wait for people to get in accidents or something where they had say brain damage, but the rest of their body was okay. So their body becomes like a donor. Um, and he speculated perhaps somewhat controversially that, you know, prisoners bodies in China could be used uh, for donation uh, for these head transplants. And, and again, this kind of gets at this idea of, or tough question, like what would the source of the bodies be, right? I mean, so if you're, let's say you're a super rich uh, guy who, uh, you know, is getting up in, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, you think you're starting to think about a, a head or brain transplant, you know, you're going to want the body to be of someone much younger than you, right? Probably, again, kind of getting on this idea that that might help sort of stave off aging. You don't want them to have any diseases. But it's not like there's just you know a store for for uh, 
donor bodies for this kind of thing. Um, and again, this is, this is a lot more complicated than just getting a liver or kidney uh, from someone who was in a car accident or something like that. So, uh, you know, if you start thinking about the potential source of these donor bodies, it can get kind of scary. And, and you think about like prisoners or uh, other things like that. Um, I guess some have also kind of imagined this idea uh, and this is, I would say, equally kind of disturbing of, of being able to perhaps grow human bodies in a laboratory that don't have a head and brain of their own, and then you just transplant uh, someone else's. So all of this stuff is, it's kind of unsettling, but, you know, again, it's, it's you know, attracting a lot of attention. I, I think there's a lot of reason to think that it's important to debunk kind of uh, the possibilities here, you know, maybe at some much further future point down the road, this kind of thing could be possible. I, I don't think we're even remotely close, even in um, animals that are all like people, you know, maybe some of the rodent research will, will continue. Um, you know, I also have my doubts, you know, if you just think about the steps you'd have to go through, you know, if you're this aging person and you want a head transplant of your head onto a new body, you know, again, that head has to be removed from your body and all the blood, I guess, would come out. And, and you know, think about how traumatic that would be for the brain. It's hard to imagine a brain recovering from that. And so proponents of this idea, at least, you know, say, oh, they'll just chill the head down, chill the brain down, and that will, you know, prevent injury. Um, but, you know, if you think about even a mild stroke, you know, it's just a temporary reduction in blood flow to one part of your brain can lead to permanent damage. And with these head or brain transplants, we're talking about all the blood being gone for quite a long time while this presumably lengthy procedure to reattach it to another body is uh, undertaken. So that, you know, it's hard to imagine the brain coming out of that in very good shape at all. So that's today's video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. You know, again, this is sort of mostly meant to be kind of debunk uh, the idea of head transplants in, in the near future but I know people are really interested in it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, or you watch some of our other videos and you like those as well, please subscribe to our channel. And again, this is Paul Knopfler from UC Davis. I'll see you next time.